Paper Sean presents the notes borrowed from the smartest kid in class. Double check button what one teacher everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook from the brains behind Brain Quest. The people who wrote this card series. A great way to educate yourself while still learning new things and keeping yourself cool. Keeping yourself cool. And finally, well, studying hard. A great way to create a fan to do this. And so let's get started with today's episode of Unit 6, the coordinate plane and functions, part two. Linear and nonlinear functions. Let's get started. All right, to learn about linear functions, you're going to need to learn about relations. Now, a relation is a set of ordered pairs, like the x and y coordinates are in a relationship. And in a relation, all the x coordinates are a domain, and all the y coordinates are a range. Now, you'll have to memorize that, because this will be in the tests. Now, it, now you can always graph relations by putting by plotting it, and then if you can draw one straight line through those points in just one straight line, then a relation. Then well, that is a function. Well, a relation can be any kind of relationship between the sets of numbers, but functions are a kind of relationship where there's only one y value for each x value. In other words, a function is a kind of relationship where none of the x values repeat. Well, none of the x values repeat. So this line, so that line, whatever it is, represents a function. And you can easily determine if a relation is a function by graphing it and doing a vertical line test. Just draw a vertical line or two on the graph. If your vertical line ever touches two points of the relationship, it's not a function. And now let me give you some examples. Okay. I'll give you four examples. And then let's you do the vertical line test on each of them to see if they are a function or not. Okay, I accidentally drew it sideways. I just hope you don't mind. And here are they. All right, the line test. Let's draw two lines for each just to make sure. Only one point. Only one point. Okay, this will definitely not be one, but let's just do the test, just in case. Bang, ang, 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 two points. Well, definitely cannot be it. Ang, 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 two points. Let's do some more. How about this one? Ang, 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 two points. How about this one? Well, this side it can do, but because of this side, this is not a, this is not a function. How about this one? One, ding dong ding. One, ding dong ding. Yep, this is a function. By the way, the axes don't count. And this is the line, this is the vertical line test. And you can always use this to check your answers to make sure if it's a function or not. And now inputs and outputs. In algebraically, this is how you create a function. Whatever you input an equation like y is equal to x plus something or y is equal to something times x plus something or minus something, then that equation will be a function. Whatever you put as your x will turn out as your y, and you if you put it on there and you keep using the same equation, then you will always create a function. And you will end up with a very, well, nice graph. You can always graph it yourself, and all of these are my attempts. All right, let's talk about slope. Now, what is a slope? Now, the slope is the commonly referred to the steepness of a line. More specifically, the slope is a, is a, a number that is a ratio that describes the tilt of a line. The slope 
is equal to the rise divided by the run. Now the rise is how much a line goes up or down, while the run is how much a line moves left or right. This is the run, and this is the rise. It can go in the opposite direction, you know. This is the run, and this is the rise. And that's how you actually do it. And we use square. We use the coordinates already created units to say this to say and tell everyone the slope. And the rise or the run can also be fractions themselves. Also, it will complicate the whole process. And there are five things you need to know about slopes. Anytime you move up, that is a positive rise. Anytime you move down, that is a negative rise. Anytime you move right, that is a positive run. And anytime you move left, that is a negative run. And the slope is the same everywhere on a straight line. And yeah, I just basically told you about how to find the slope of a line. And to find out more, just read the book. Now, linear equations are when two... A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. And a linear equation always has the form of y, y coordinate is equal to the slope times the x coordinate plus the y intercept. Well, what is the y intercept? It is the coordinate of the y axis when the x coordinate is zero. It's basically where the line crosses, is the coordinate where the line crosses through the y axis. And yeah. You can always guess, or you can always know where to pinpoint your points whenever you do it. Whenever you see this equation, you'll eventually find out more. And sometimes you can put more of them together and get this little graphy. This is very complicated, don't you agree? Also, it is way more simpler to actually just separate, draw them separately in different coordinates. I'll just keep, I'll just stay with the, uh, I'll just stay with these combined ones. Well, simultaneous linear equations, well, simultaneous equations are two linear equations and we study them together. Sometimes, if they're parallel, then we can just say that they're parallel, and we can always solve a simultaneous linear equations by finding out where they cross, where they intersect, and write that coordinate of where they intersect as the solution of simultaneous linear equations. You can either graph it, or you can either solve it in a more suitable way that does not need a lot of graph paper. Oh, I hope you're not wearing out of graph paper. The substitution method, let me give an example. 4x plus y is equal to 7. 3x plus 2y is equal to 9. Here is a way. First, number your equations. And turn one of your most simplest equations into, well, either x is equal to or y is equal to. In this case, I'll do the y is equal to. y is equal to 9 halves, 9 halves minus uh, 3 halves x. And let's put substitute this for the y. For x plus nine half m minus three halves x is equal to seven. And then five halves x is equal to is equal to two and one half. Five halves. Five halves, and then multiply this by two and five, and you get x is equal to one. And you can input this into either these two equations. Also, I always like to put it in here. Then we can so solve that y is equal to three, and so here, your answer is y. 
comma three. But what about nonlinear equations? Well, nonlinear equations are not straight lines, and when they are graphed, and they are not in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. One example of a nonlinear equation is a quadratic function, and in a quadratic function, the input variable x is squared like so, x squared, and the result is a parabola, which is a U-shaped curve. Well, here's an example of here's an example of a a, a, a quadratic function. And here is a parabola. This basically this is result. You can always find uh, you can always graph it up and just find out all these. While an absolute value function is basically where you get a V-shaped graph. V-shaped graph. And that is most likely all you need for now. All you need for now. And you have just learned everything about the linear equations and nonlinear equations. Also, if you really do want to learn literally everything, just read the book. So, hope to see you guys in the next episode. And if, I guys, and if you guys do, see you then. Shout out. Peace.